In this lecture, I want to talk about different sampling methods. So we know that this course is all about data and how you um, analyze and what conclusions you can make from data. So how, how do you collect data? Well, in statistics, we call this sampling. And there's going to be some common sampling methods that we'll discuss in this class. All right, so the types of sampling methods that will be discussed are the four following. There's simple random sampling. This is the most important type of sampling in statistics. Um, it's, the, it's the sampling method for which um, most advanced theories are based on. However, it also tends to be actually the hardest to, to get. Then there'll be something called stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and systematic sampling. So in the following slides, what I want to do is I want to give you a definition of each and then talk you through um, some examples. Okay, so first we'll start with simple random sampling. So simple random sampling is a procedure in which each member of the population or that you have is chosen strictly by chance. So if you end up becoming part of this sample, the re you got picked solely by chance. There was no other reason you got it. It was just by luck. So each member of the population is equally likely to be chosen. So for example, if we wanted to call people in the United States to estimate the average income in the United States, the probability that you would get called is exactly the same as the probability I would get called. That's what this means by equally likely. And if you meet these two requirements, the resulting sample is called a random sample. Okay, so if each person is chosen by chance and everybody has the same odds of being chosen, you have a random sample. Think of it like um, drawing names from a hat. Okay, everyone has the same exact chance of getting picked. Okay, that's the way we would consider simple random sampling. Or if you wanted to uh, sample people from a large population, everyone has the same uh, likely chance of being selected. All right, but the, the thing is, simple random sampling is, is often not easy to achieve. Um, so there has to be some other tricky methods that we can collect data. And one of the next one is called stratified sampling. So a stratified sample is you take your um, population and you separate them into non-overlapping groups. Then what you do is you obtain a simple random sample from each group, okay? So the non-overlapping groups are what are called stratums. So each individual in, in the stratum should be similar in some way, so they should have some common characteristic. Uh, here's an example um, from a high school, okay? So suppose you want to um, uh, estimate how many hours of sleep students get at night, okay? What you might want to do instead of simply random sampling students is do the stratified sampling. So you're going to take your, your population, th these high school students, okay? And uh, you're going to separate them into non-overlapping groups. Well, you, you might separate them by homerooms, you know? Um, so now, you know, the same student can't belong to two different homerooms. And then what you would do is you would sample a couple students from each homeroom, okay? Your population is divided up into different homerooms, so you sample from diff different homerooms. Uh, not all students in each homeroom, but just a few. And that would be your resulting sample. That would be your stratified sample. Then there's something called cluster sampling. It's a lot like stratified sampling. So a cluster sample is obtained by selecting all individuals within a randomly selected collection or group of individuals. So sticking with that... Um, uh, that idea of the homeroom. So you have all your population of, of high school students. Each cluster represents uh, um, a different uh, homeroom. What you would do then is you would sample cluster one, you would sample cluster two, and then you might sample cluster 100. So not, not a few from each cluster, but all the people in each of a few randomly selected clusters. Finally, there's what's called systematic sample. And this is obtained by selecting every kth individual or object from population. So think about this. If you wanted to do the um, example with the students, what you would do is you'd line up all the students in, in, say, the auditorium, and you'd select every fifth or sixth or seventh individual, just as long as it was done in a systematic way. What I have here for you is uh, an example of um, each of these here. So simple random sampling, you have the entire population, you just select people at random from the population. Stratified sampling, what you do is you take your population, you put them into non-overlapping groups, and then you sample a few from each group. Cluster sampling is you take your population and you put them into clusters, and then you randomly select all the people in just a few clusters. Systematic sampling, you have your population lined up, 
and you would select every, in this case, it'd be every third person, okay? So the second, the fifth, the eighth, the eleventh, so on, like that. All right, sampling um, isn't always going to give you the most accurate results because the whole idea behind sampling is you want your sample to estimate the population. That's, that's the goal. So sometimes there can be errors in sampling. So there's two types of errors. There's what's called non-sampling errors and sampling errors. So non-sampling errors, these are errors that result from the survey process. They are due to non-responses of individuals selected to be the in-survey, inaccurate responses, poorly worded questions, etc. You try to control for these as much as you can. So for example, um, the census. Non-responses of individuals, they don't want that, so they send census takers out. Um, uh, one thing that's tricky would be inaccurate responses. Uh, so for example, if there's a poll that goes out um, and it says, you know, asks you how much money you make per year, and I say, I make $10 million a year. That's not true. That's an inaccurate response. That's a non-sampling error. The person collecting the data didn't do anything wrong. They just got an inaccurate response, okay? Sampling errors, okay? These ones here um, I want to talk about. All right, so these are errors that result from using sampling to estimate information regarding a population. This type of error be occurs because a sample gives incomplete information or inaccurate information about a population. Sampling errors, there's not much you can do to control these. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Suppose you want to estimate the average income in the United States. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to call 100 people, let's say. And the first 99 people you call um, all have normal jobs. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, nurses, bus driver, bartender, things like that. They all have normal jobs. They have a normal income. But then the 100th person you call ends up being Jeff Bezos, the CEO of um, Amazon. And at the time of the recording of this video, he's the wealthiest person in the world. All right, and you were to take the average income of those 100 people, because you got Jeff Bezos in there, it gives incomplete information or inaccurate information about the population, and that sample would do a poor job estimating the population income, or population mean income. All right, so going back, four common sampling methods we'll talk about in this class. Just know that in statistics, you can have errors, things called non-sampling errors, and then sampling errors.